that's a load. This is all just junk wood and stuff they dump up here at the city park, city DPW area that uh, tree companies drop off or the part, you know, the, the city cuts down, they don't want to deal with. It's pine, it's, it's junk, it's not worth anything for, for firewood. But for me, it works perfect for the outdoor wood boiler. All this wood, the park, they generally, a DPW, they just push it into a pile and burn it every couple months. So uh, I try to get it before they do. So this is pretty, pretty common for me every, uh, I like to get out every week, usually on Wednesdays. Uh, get out and I collect free wood. Uh, wood. Wood should never really cost anything, at least here in the Midwest. I mean, there's so many trees. People have trees down in their yard, you know, windstorms come through. I, we have trees on our property that blow down every year and, and break off and die. And, and so there, there's never a shortage of, of wood. It should never really cost anything. Now, every once in a while, we go out and buy a maybe a face cord of, uh, of oak or something like that from a neighbor. Or, you know, that's just a more of a uh, more of an extra comfort than anything. We like, you know, I don't have a lot of oak around and so it's nice to have that extra uh, real good wood for overnights and stuff like that. But, but generally we don't, we don't buy wood. There's plenty of wood, but the, the true cost of heating with wood is in your time. Every week throughout the winter time, usually in spring, I will spend the day on Wednesday collecting wood. You know, it's not every week through the winter time, but maybe every other week. And, uh, you know, generally we spend four hours, uh, four to six hours collecting wood every week for, for those times, just for you know maybe a third of the year, quarter of the year. So it is a lot of time investment and that's time that I'm not doing something else. So heating with wood is free in the sense of the wood doesn't cost you anything, but there certainly is a cost in, in your time. That is no, there's no, uh, nothing hidden about that. Uh, it takes a lot of time and energy and you have to be able-bodied in order to, to heat with wood. But there are some financial costs, uh, kind of hidden costs, I guess, with heating with wood, some things that you need and some, some annual costs that uh, we'll go through here. I'm gonna get this load of wood home and uh, we'll go through some of the actual financial costs of heating with wood. So the wood might be free, but there is some things that you're going to need to purchase and invest in and use if you're going to be processing and heating with wood. So if you truly want to heat your home 100% or even maybe a shop or a garage or other things uh, with wood, uh, you're going to need some tools. You're going to need some things to, uh, to cut down trees or chop up wood into logs. So the biggest cost up front that you're going to have to invest in is going to be a chainsaw. Now I have two chainsaws here. I have this uh, steel, steel, it's an MS362 CQ. Um, this is a uh, real nice high-end saw. Uh, and I also have the uh, Husqvarna Rancher 455, which is a great kind of homeowner level saw um, and the upper end or mid-level of that, that category. Both of these saws are great. This is the, the premium saw. This is the, the saw that's going to last me a long time. Uh, and I tend to use this one when I'm, you know, beat this one up a little bit more when I'm cutting in the dirt or out in the woods or like today, you know, burning through a bunch of sappy pine and in the, in the dirt and stuff like that. Um, or I'll just grab whichever one has the, the newest chain on it. <laughs> so having a sharp chain makes all the difference. So you don't have to go this high end. This saw costs almost $1,000, whereas this one here costs about $400. Um, this one is available on Amazon and I'll put a link in the description so you can check these out. But, um, but you definitely will need to get a saw. I would recommend at least something like this don't go with the you know the cheap Home Depot models or you know some of the home lights and stuff are fine. There's some other brands out there that are great, um, but if you're going to invest in a saw and you're going to be heating, you, you need to invest in a good saw that's going to last you a long time, not be breaking down all the time, not that you have to put a bunch of money into. The other thing that you're going to need is uh, some tools to care for the saw. So this is a small grease gun. Uh, this is for the Husqvarna. It has an actual grease point on the bar that needs to be greased and lubed every time you use the saw. So I have that. For, for that purpose. The steel is uh, sealed, so you don't have to grease it. 
and then you're going to need some type of sharpening equipment. Now, this is very basic stuff. I think this costs like uh, 20 bucks. This is like a TSC brand. I think it's a county line um, TSC brand. Uh, Oregon makes a good one. Uh, this is just a file set. It has the guides and the files and all that stuff that you need to keep your chains sharpened. I also buy a new chain for each saw every year. That's just part of the, the inputs, the uh, you know, cost of, of processing wood is I just get a new chain every year um, and I alternate and keep them sharp until they're worn out and then I get rid of them. And there also is some maintenance costs for owning a chainsaw. There's gonna be spark plugs and air filters and things like that over, over time. Now I would estimate that these saws are gonna last me 10 years before I would need to you know, invest in something else or get a new saw. So if, if you were to go out and spend, let's say $500 on this, plus some of the um, you know, sharpening equipment, uh, maybe another $100 on some safety equipment, which I would recommend, a helmet with the earmuffs is great, and uh, chaps are definitely something that you're gonna to wanna to have if you're out processing a lot of wood. So with all that stuff, let's say $600. If you amortize that or spread that out over 10 years of owning this equipment, um, with the maintenance costs included and other little things that you're gonna to need to get, you know, sharpening stuff's not gonna last you forever. You might need to replace that every few years or something. You're still only looking at, you know, under $100 a year for all that stuff. So, you know, over 10 years, you know, six, $700 total cost over, over the years. I mean, you're, you're still not looking at even $100 a year that you're gonna be, that you've spent on it, this investment. It does cost something initially to invest in those things, but once you really spread that out over the, over time, it's not that much. So the other thing that people often bring up is, oh, you're, you're burning all this fuel and, you know, going, hauling wood around and all the fuel in your saws and all those things, you might as well just go buy propane. Well, to be honest with you, these saws use such a small amount of fuel. So generally, now I heat our home with wood 100%. I heat a greenhouse that I have the outdoor wood boiler here that heats the greenhouse. I have that running throughout the entire winter this year and, I, and I'm doing maple syrup. Uh, in the springtime, so it'll be, you know, boiling maple syrup. All of that wood processing and all that cutting that I do with these saws, I generally don't use more than 10 gallons of gas. I buy super expensive gas. I buy the 100% gasoline, ethanol-free stuff for these saws. And also, you know, you have the oil additives that you have to add to mix the fuel. All that stuff combined, including the lubrication for the, uh, the bar, so you have to buy bar oil that you're going to be, you know, using in these as well. Um, I usually buy two jugs of that on Amazon. I think it's like nine or maybe $15. I think it's about 10 bucks for a, for a jug of that stuff. So if you add all those things up, if you add the fuel cost, the bar oil and the oil additives that I need for the, for the, to mix the gasoline, even with the most expensive gasoline, if I use 10 gallons of gas, that's about $30 uh, plus the oil and the bar oil and all that stuff. Let's say I spend $50 a year. Um, let's even say $60 a year on all that stuff. Uh, it's still a tiny drop in the bucket compared to what I would have to spend for propane and all that stuff. So, so those costs do not equate to that much. Uh, there is a cost involved for sure. Uh, there, that is the true cost of processing wood is that there, you have to pay for those things, but it still is not that much. So the other thing that a lot of people will want to have is a good wood splitter. Um, now, this depends on how much you want to invest. If you want to go real high end, it's going to cost you more. Uh, if you go with the entry level wood splitter, you can get them for under a thousand dollars. There's some electric ones that are even cheaper than that. Uh, if you get into the higher power gas ones, you're looking at a thousand, maybe fifteen hundred dollars uh, and on up from there. Now, a good wood splitter is going to last you 10, 15, even 20 years if you take good care of it. Uh, probably last you longer than that if you really cared for it well. So again, you can take that money and split it out over all that time, and you're still not looking at that much extra cost. Now, there is a fuel cost, and there is maintenance cost on that, changing the oil and hydraulic oil and filters and things like that for the, for the log splitter. For the wood splitter, I probably only use about 10 gallons, maybe 15 gallons of gas in the wood splitter per year. It's a bigger engine. It requires a little more fuel. Uh, so I probably spend 45, 50 bucks on 100%, you know, pure get pure 100% uh, uh, gasoline, no ethanol that I run in that also. So you're still not looking at that much money. Now that is a luxury. You can of course get a mall, get a wood splitter, and you can split by hand. If you're just heating your home with wood, that's definitely feasible. A little more energy's involved there, a little more, a little more workout, but uh, you definitely can do that. Uh, for time's sake, I use the wood splitter and I also, dealing with a lot of really big wood, really big logs like this and greener stuff, uh, it, it's almost impossible to split this stuff for the outdoor wood boiler and so having that wood splitter is a must for us here. 
So the last big item that you're going to want to have is something to haul the wood around with. A pickup truck in a trailer, a yard trailer like this, or a bigger trailer, dump trail, whatever you want to invest in. But I'm not going to include that in the cost of heating with wood because those are things that we need to have around here anyway. I haul things with this trailer and my truck all the time. Uh, the fuel that it costs to haul wood around, I don't really include that either. It's so minuscule. You know, I have to go uptown, and when I go uptown, I get a load of wood. I, you know, I, I combine trips and other things overlap, and so I can't really separate out any fuel cost for getting and hauling wood around in the cost of a trailer. Those are just things that overhead costs on the farm here and on the homestead that I don't include in, in, in wood, uh, wood getting. That's just part of life out here. And of course, there are other little hidden costs too. I mean, gloves work gloves and uh you know i burn through clothes jeans you know other things like that when i'm out working with wood it's a it's a rough job things get worn out quicker boots and all that kind of stuff there are other other costs with with that but they're again part of life out here overhead costs for living on a homestead and so i don't really include that in in the overall cost of uh of, of processing wood for heating our home so the big controversy is this. Everyone always says when I'm talking about heating wood, well, I would rather work at a job somewhere and just you know, go make some money. I can make a bunch of money at the office or doing this or doing that, and then just buy propane or natural gas. Well, that is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You're trading your time to work for somebody else or to work somewhere else or work in an office or something like that so that you, can, you don't have to do this. However, I would say, you know, for, for me and for others that are looking to live a self-sufficient or self-reliant lifestyle, that's not what I want to do. I don't want to go work for somebody else and then pay the pay a utility bill. I would rather do this myself from our own land as much as possible um, and, and get out and work with my hands, process wood, you know, instead of sitting in a chair all day and then paying for a gym membership. You know, I can go out and, and be active and do things on the farm and work and, and to heat our home. And uh, it, it's for me, it's much more fulfilling to do that. It's satisfying to provide those things for myself. I won't be able to do this forever. You know, if I, as I get older, I'll want to do this less and less and I'll probably want to pay the, the propane bill. That's fine. But uh, this is something that uh, if you want to live this lifestyle that you have to be prepared to invest the time and energy into doing. When it comes down to the nuts and bolts of, you know, is it worth it? And what are all the hidden costs? You know, everything that you, that I talked about today, chainsaws and splitters and fuel and maintenance costs and all those things. If you were to add all those things up, and I do keep track of those things throughout the year and how much I spend, um, you know, for tax purposes and stuff like that. And it's nowhere near. We would probably spend about $1,500 plus per year to heat our home with propane. And that's on a mid-level year. I mean, the cost of propane, if it goes up, then we pay way more. If it goes down, we might pay less. But with wood, it's pretty consistent. Uh, if I spend $400 a year on all this stuff together, and that includes all the equipment and all that stuff, if I spend three or $400 a year, that's still a quarter of the cost that I would be spending uh, on propane. And for me, that includes heating our greenhouse and heating our, uh, and doing all our maple syrup and plus heating our home. So three different sources of heat that we supply with wood. So for you just heating your home, it's gonna be much less than that. You don't really have uh, as much uh, overhead cost there. It comes down to your personal decision. If you want to heat with wood and you don't mind getting out and doing the work and you're able to do it, and then it's worth it to you. It's also financially worth it. Even if you were to have buy wood for the whole year, I would say in most cases, it's probably still cheaper than propane. And that's just the only source of, of uh, heat we have out here. Uh, electricity or propane, they're both expensive. So, so hopefully I, I covered uh, all those things. If there's something I missed, something I forgot, throw that stuff in the comment section. I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts on heating with wood. Those of you who have done it for years and uh, those of you maybe who have questions, throw that stuff down below as well. We'll answer those as best we can. Uh, don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video and of course subscribe to the channel if this is your first time here. We do lots of farming and DIY uh, building things and gardening and growing things and the whole self-sufficient, self-reliant, self-sustainable lifestyle and anything that goes along with that. So as always guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.